Hello and welcome to Vivork. I'm Brian Watrous. In this video series, I'll be demonstrating how to deploy a VMware VRealize Operations 6.6 .6 cluster. In the first video, we'll take a look at how to deploy the master node. In the second video, we'll see how to deploy two additional data nodes. And then in the final video, we'll see how to take those three nodes and cluster them together for high availability purposes. Let's get started. To begin, we'll create our master node. To do this, we will go to our data center. As you can see, we've already logged into the vSphere web client as administrator at vSphere.local. We'll go to the data center. We'll right click. We'll choose deploy OVF template. And because we've already downloaded the OVF file into our lab environment, we won't use URL, but rather we'll click on browse local file. We'll browse to the file itself. We'll select the OVF file, then click Open. To continue, we'll click Next. We'll call our master node VROPS1, and then we'll specify that rather than putting the VM, the virtual appliance, into a specific folder, we'll just put it into the data center itself. Then we'll click Next. As you can see in our lab environment, we have two clusters. The first is our user compute cluster. The second is our management cluster. And in there, there is a host called ESXi02. And that's where we'll place our first vRealize operations node. Then we'll click Next. In order to respect your time, we will accelerate this video at various portions, including starting right now. As you can see, we are now given details about the deployment that's about to occur, including information that's of importance to us in this lab environment. Notice that the size on disk section reports that if we choose thick provisioning, we will require 274 gigabytes. On the other hand, if we choose thin provisioning, we'll only need 1.6 gigabytes. In the lab environment that we're performing this demonstration, we have limited disk space, so we will choose thin provisioned. To continue, we'll click Next. Here we see the end user license agreement. We'll accept that license and we'll continue by clicking Next. On this screen, we have various sizes that we can choose for this new node that we're deploying. Now, one thing that's important in vRealize operations is to ensure that all of the nodes are the same size. So for the master node, we could choose extra small, small, medium, large, or extra large. You'll notice that we also have some choices for remote collectors, but for our purposes here, we're going to choose extra small. You know, you'll notice as we choose the different sizes, the description informs us how many virtual CPUs and how much memory we will require. So in this case, we need two virtual CPUs and eight gigabytes of memory. We'll click next to continue. And as mentioned previously, we're going to choose thin provisioning due to the, the smaller amount of disk space that we have in our demo environment. If we are using a VM storage policy or if we're using storage DRS, we could specify so here. But what we're going to do is jump straight to our data store called SA Shared 2 That will be the location where we deploy this virtual appliance. To continue, we'll click Next. And on this screen, we'll specify that we want our newly deployed node to plug into the management network. We'll click Next to continue. And then on this screen, we need to supply some networking information. For instance, the DNS domain, the default gateway, the IP address of this node. For our master node, we'll put it at IP address.181. The net mask is 255.255.255.0. And then here under advanced settings, as you can see, we could select IPv6, but we're not going to in this demonstration. And we can and we will set the time zone to Pacific. Again, we'll click next to continue. We're taken to a details screen 
So on the ready to complete screen, we'll double check that everything looks appropriate as it does. We'll click finish and the new vRise operations node will begin deploying. As you can see on the left side of the screen, the machine itself has been created and we're going to monitor as it gets built by going to the recent tasks pane. As you can see, the node is just about to start getting built. Now it's being built. And once again, we'll accelerate the video to speed things up. As you can see, our first vRealize Operations node, the master node, has now been built. The next step is to boot that machine. So we'll go to the machine, we'll right click, we'll choose power, power on, and then we'll give the machine sufficient time to boot. In this lab environment, it will take approximately five minutes to boot the new VRIZE operations node. So once again, to respect your time, we will edit out that portion of this video. Now that the master node is powered on, we'll connect to it by opening up a browser tab. Then we'll go to a URL which points to that VROPS node. In this demonstration environment, we are using self-signed certificates. So we'll click continue to this website. And as you can see, we are greeted by a screen where we have three choices. To deploy the master, we can choose either of these first two choices, either express installation or new installation. These both perform the same task. The difference is that new installation asks a few additional questions. So we'll go ahead and use the new installation option. And as you can see, we're greeted by a getting started page, which explains the process that we're just about to go through. To continue, we'll click Next. We'll type the administrator password. We'll type it again to confirm it. Then we'll click Next to continue. As mentioned a few moments ago, in this demonstration environment, we are using self-signed certificates. If you have a real certificate that you'd like to use instead, you can click on Install a Certificate. Again, we'll use the default self-signed certificate by clicking Next. On this screen, we're asked to supply the name of our VROPS node, so we'll call this one VROPS1, and we're asked to supply the IP address of our NTP server. We'll click Next, and on the Ready to Complete screen, we can once again see the process that we're going through. To continue with the configuration, we'll click Finish. As we wait for the configuration to complete, one of the things that you're about to notice is that uh, VROPS will list the one node that we've deployed, but it will continue to say that high availability is disabled. And furthermore, it will say that while the VROPS node is configured, VRI's operations itself is not yet started. So let's give this a few more moments to configure VRI's operations on the master node. And as you can see, the master node has now been configured, but its state and status point out that it's not running and it's offline. So what we have at this point is a single VROPS node, but what we have set out to do in this video is to configure an entire cluster. So what we'll do next is deploy two additional VROPS nodes. Both of these are going to be data collector nodes, and we'll do so following a very similar process. Now that we've completed deploying the master node that completes this video, be sure to see the next video in which we're going to deploy two data nodes.